All right, we got another one. This one is a 2002 Dodge Neon, and the problem with it is that it has a check engine light on. Okay, now the symptoms are, as you're driving down the road, you get no speedometer. So, check engine lights on, we're gonna go check it out. Follow me. Here it goes. Car's running, parking brakes on. Okay, here we go. Check engine lights on, and um, as you're driving, the speedometer right here, it won't move. It will not move. Let's go. All right, so here we go. I'm driving down the road. You can already see the speedometer's not even moving. I'm gonna take you guys on a big street though, so you can see that even no matter what speed you're going, you have no um, no speedometer. Alright, perfect. And also, one thing I noticed is once it reaches about 30, 40 miles per hour, it just gets lazy. Okay, so there you go. You can hear the RPMs go pretty high, and the transmission is not shipping. itself. We'll make a U-turn. I'm gonna take this back home. Okay. Let's take this back home. Check for codes and then uh, we're gonna do some checks. Symptoms. Check engine lights on, no speedometer, and after a while it has a hard time shifting. We don't know what gear, but it doesn't matter right now. So what do we do next? We go to the check engine light, we check for codes, see what those codes are, and then we attack. Turn the key on. Hook up our scanner. Okay, so the scanner that I'm going to be using is this Actron scanner. This is my first scanner. Okay, now this is pretty old and I'll show you how old it is in a little bit. This uh, model number is actually a CP9145, if anyone's interested. Now all this does is, this scanner just read codes, it gives you PIDs, um, it gives you readiness monitors, freeze frame data, it does give you live data, it reads and it clears codes. What I like about this, is that it does everything pretty quick here let's get to it okay so once we're hooked up you're just gonna go ahead and hit enter on the scanner and you go straight to vehicle diagnostics now let me start from the beginning you're gonna go over to you can either go to global and that's gonna be for any car after 96 okay you have your domestic you have European you have Asian oh shit that's it Domestic, European, and Asian. This is a 2002 Dodge Neon, so it's domestic. Hit enter. And Chrysler makes Dodge. It's a car. 2002 Dodge Neon. And I know my car is a C. With an automatic transmission. Okay, we're going to go ahead and read the codes. And let's see. Read the codes. Found three codes. P1698, no transmission bus communication. P0500, vehicle speed sensor A malfunction. 
And another P1698, no transmission bus communication. All three codes for the check engine light are transmission related. That gives us a direction. That tells us you have a transmission issue. Now, do you have a bad transmission? Do you have a bad speed sensor? We did have a code for a, for a speed sensor circuit malfunction. Just because you have a code for a speed sensor does not mean that the speed sensor is bad. There's a couple checks we still gotta do. One, we can scope the, uh, the sensor and see what kind of reading we're getting. But if you've seen my previous videos, if you saw my first video that I put out, my, my scanner's broken and I can't scope anything right now. So, I'm stuck with this. And I'm gonna use Mitchell to get some wiring diagrams. And we're gonna go from there. Usually when you have a P1698 no communication trouble code, that's either one of two things. That computer, the transmission control module, is dead and it's not communicating with the other ones. Or you have a problem in the communication data lines. Okay? So, what I'm gonna do next is just the basics. With this and with information from Mitchell. So let's go. Ah, okay, real quick. This check engine light came on earlier. So what I did was I checked the codes and I had a P0605 and that P1698 that you guys saw. I cleared the codes and right now that I went on the other test drive, that P0605 did not come back. But let me show you what P0605 means. Okay, so here's a, here's a circuit description for that P0605 that I'm talking about. The code reads, internal trans controller. When I hooked up the scanner and I read the codes, it said internal TCM failure. So anytime you have a check engine light, come read the circuit description and that'll tell you how that circuit works. Why that check engine light set and it's going to give you better understanding, a better understanding of how to diagnose this check engine light. So here on circuit description, it says DTCs will set if an internal TCM malfunction occurs. And then you have your possible causes and then it tells you what to check and what to do. So from here. I need to check my grounds to the transmission control module and I need to check my powers to the transmission control module. Okay, that's all right here. And then we're going to go from there. <laughs> Reason I took that off is because the computer is hiding in there. I need to get that computer out. And I'm gonna check the powers on the ground. if you can see this but these pins are labeled okay if you look closely right here this wire this wire right here is wire 60 that's 40 and that's wire 20 now if we go back to the diagram our main feed our main feed is on pin 56 okay So our main feed is on pin 56. This is number 60, so this will be 59, 58, 57, and this is 56 right here. Now according to the diagram, it's a red white wire, and this right here is a red with a white wire. So I'm gonna stick a T-pin in there, and I'm gonna check for 12 volts. That wire should have 12 volts all the time. Okay, so my ground is hooked up to the strut 
with an alligator clip and I put a T-pin on pin 56 which is a red and white wire and I got 12.16 12.16 on that wire is good okay now I'm gonna turn the key on and I'm gonna check my two other power feeds okay keys on now we go down to the computer and check the two power feeds now if you remember it's pin number 8 yellow wire and pin number 11 I believe was a red white wire I'll pull the diagram up and I'll let you guys see. All right, this is the same thing again. We already know that this is pin 20 on the bottom. 20, and this is pin one. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so it's this wire right here now if you remember from the diagram that one should have 12 volts but only in the start position okay so I'm gonna leave this right here I'm gonna go crank the car and you should see 12 volts on that multimeter All right, and I know that it didn't go all the way to 12 volts, but all I want to see there is a rise in voltage. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to redo that test, but I hooked up a test light up here. I left the multimeter on there. Hopefully this test light doesn't fall. I'm going to go ahead and crank it. You should see the test light light up when I crank it. So here it goes, take two. I saw the voltmeter go all the way to 9 volts and I saw the test light light up. That is a good sign and that is a good circuit. Alright, so now I'm going to move my T-pin over. Okay, that one should have 12 volts right now. Now when I say 12 volts, it doesn't have to be 12 volts. It just has to be battery voltage. This battery is dying on me. This is why you only see 1163, but we have battery voltage. That's battery voltage with the key on that's three circuits confirmed one with power all the time one with a key on battery voltage and one with car cranking battery voltage so now we have a sensor ground and the computer ground to check okay the computer ground is pin 57 and it's a black red wire I believe so 60 59 58 57 so this wire right here this should be 57 and I should have close to zero volts there make sure you're all the way in and that looks like a good ground basically what you want to see on a good ground is close to zero volts as possible and that's a good ground to me the other pin was for the sensor ground it's pin 51 it's this black and blue wire right next to the um right next to the nut so that sensor ground check out the voltmeter okay that's a good sensor ground these two grounds and the three powers going to this tcm are good what does that tell you all right now i know you guys didn't see the uh p0605 but I had to check three powers to the TCM and two grounds. Everything checked out good. So now it's time to change the transmission control module. Anytime you change a module on a car, you're gonna have to reprogram it, all right? You might be able to get away with it on some cars, but on a transmission, you're gonna have to relearn the shift points, gear ratios, and um, a couple other things. I'm not exactly sure what other things, but I found a place online that has transmission control modules and all you got to do is send them your VIN number, send them the mileage, send them the codes that you pulled from the transmission control module. They're going to send you a new module and they're going to reprogram it to your VIN. So I did that ahead of time. I have the module right here. 
and uh, I'm gonna link these guys down in the in the description. Time for an unboxing. Okay, you are gonna have to ship it back so they send you a shipping label, okay? Now here is my module, okay? I got this module from a company called ACR, All Computer Resources. Now this is a remanufactured unit, but um, yeah, it's programmed to the car already. It's a 2002 Dodge Neon. My VIN is on there, and uh, they say this is just plug and play, so apparently I'm just gonna have to plug this module in, and we should be good to go, but we have yet to see that, so. Let's go put it on there. We're gonna bolt everything back on and then we're gonna go for a test drive. Remember, we had no speedometer, so after we put this module in, we're looking for speedometer reading, no check engine light, and proper shifting. Let's go put it on. All right, now this is pretty easy. The bolt holds the connector in, take it out. Now before you plug the module back in, make sure you disconnect your battery. I already did that. So I don't have to worry about that. Take your computer, stick it in here. Actually, I'm gonna have to stick it up in the car first, then I can plug this in. So, this is just gonna go up in here. Okay, it's in. Now don't forget to bolt it down because you don't want any kind of vibration. Now, normally, this wouldn't be that hard to put in, but this car's been hit before, so this piece of metal right here is bent out, and that just makes it a little bit more difficult to um, put it in there. You just bolt it down, and uh, make sure this connector goes in straight. You don't want to bend any of the pins in there. Once this bolt catches on, you can just screw it in and you're good to go. Reconnect your battery and go drive. Alright guys, computer's in. Now it's time for the real test. Now this is where we go test drive it and we verify that everything's fixed. So let's go take a look. And let's go. <laughs> we got speed guys, we got some speed. Let's see how far we can take it. All right, we're going 50 miles an hour, that's not bad. RPM seems pretty good. I call this a fix. Check engine light is not coming back on, I'll tell you that. Alright, let's finish it up. Alright guys, that's gonna be the end of the video right here. No more check engine light, speedometer's working, transmission is shifting properly, so this car's fixed. One more thing guys, if you guys have any questions or comments, or if you guys need help with any of your cars, leave any questions or comments down in the comments below and I will get back to you. If you guys take anything of value from my videos, that means a lot to me. If it's helping you guys out. Because listen, when you're in the automotive field, there's a lot of people that don't want to help you. So if I can help anybody through my videos, whether it's on replacing anything, on reading diagrams, on diagnosing, whatever it may be, if you guys take anything of value, then I'm happy with that. Go ahead and click the subscribe button. That's going to let you guys know when I put out new videos. And I want to thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.